Big cut. Look at our rules of combat based on three five-minute rounds and, of course, five five-minute rounds for championship bouts. And, of course, in the amateur division, that changed to three three-minute rounds and, of course, five three-minute rounds for championship bouts in the amateur division. It's based on the 10-point must system, judging criteria, and to get things started, we'll go ahead and throw it to the cage. Ladies and gentlemen, from the wonderful Winnebago's Casino Resort Sloan, Iowa, King of the Cage and General Tire present this three-round bout in the bantamweight division. Your referee in charge of the action, Mike Beltra. <laughs> Introducing first in the Urban Soil Blue Corner, standing five feet nine inches tall, official weight 145 pounds. He represents Team Evolution. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Rockin' City, Cleveland, Ohio, presenting Dominic the Heat Morton. Here's a part of the cross of page, fighting out of our general tire red part, also standing at 5 feet 9 inches tall. Official weight 144 pounds, 6 pounds. He represents the Long Combat Academy. Ladies and gentlemen, from Eagle Pass, Texas, presenting to Rico, the great Triple League, Mike Beltran. Once again, you're in charge of this three-round bantamweight bout. Mike Beltran now with the final stretches. All right, jump in over the rules already. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my command at all times. Help us out from long. At the side of the bill, coming up. Mike Beltran, our rep for this matchup here tonight at the Winnebago's Casino Resort. And here we go, Dominic Martin in the blue gloves, Draco Rodriguez in the red gloves, and here we go. Draco Rodriguez, a very well-rounded fighter, dominating all his opponents in his last several outings here at King of the Cage. Dominic Martin, a very comfortable fighter indeed. Been in the cage several times as well. The one thing I like about Dominic Martin, he's always comfortable no matter what. And Draco Rodriguez is such a tough opponent that Dominic says, you know what, I'll fight him. You know what I mean? I'll take that opportunity. I'll get in here and see it as an opportunity. Because tonight, if he takes out the likes of Draco, that is going to put him on the map uh, big time and catapult him to near title content, uh, contendership in the near future. Yeah, that, that's what you want to see with fighters. You know, when you, know, you offer them a fight, Hey, they say yes, they don't hesitate or, oh, let me, you know, think about it and it's that, you know. And speaking of which, you're one of those fighters that, you know, that you'll take the fight. You're like, I don't care. I just want to fight, you know. And sometimes you get opponents at the last minute because they, they realize I'm not going to fight Tony. I don't want to fight Tony. Here we go again, you know. That guy's yeah. too tough. No, it, it's, it, you know, it, it's a different feeling. You know, just uh, someone says, hey, you're going to fight this guy? Okay, let's do it. 
Some fighters get in the habit when they get their coaches and start padding their records, and that doesn't really do anything for you. It doesn't help you learn. It doesn't help you get further. You're just kind of running on fake hype, in yeah, a sense, no, it, it and that's not yeah, right. It gives you a, yeah, a false sense of uh, co you know, confidence that you don't, you don't, you know, you're, you're thinking, hey, I'm a great fighter. I can knock these guys out, this and that. And then when you get in the cage with a real fighter, reality like, sets happened? in. Yeah. What happened? Draco Rodriguez with a nice takedown. I'm sure Draco's like, ah, okay, maybe, maybe I will come back in. Oh, man, it sets up the nice guillotine. Dominic in a world of trouble right now. Oh, and that's it. You know, it happens. You know, you get, you get caught up in a position and... You just don't think someone like yeah, I mean, is going to pull that out of nowhere, and Draco does. I mean, his positioning was was not the common position, you know, to get that uh, guillotine choke in. So that probably threw threw, uh, threw him off. Like, okay, what's he got? And then all of a sudden, he's like, wait a minute. Hey, I don't feel good. Dominic Martin, though, man, nothing to keep your head held down or anything. Keep your head held high because, man, that was a great brawl, and taking on someone like Draco is not an easy task. Oh, no, just I got mean, caught up. Yeah, the whole time through. I mean, they're both going back and forth. It was a good fight. It just, hey, right here, he just got caught. Save some money on your health insurance there, too. Yeah. A bonus win for everybody. We throw it to Dean Stone for the official announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, the official time, two minutes and four seconds of round number one. The winner by top out for the PFT And here we go, round one here at Buena Vegas Casino Resort for another night of mixed martial arts action. Mike Beltran, our ref, as we get set up uh, for this matchup in the lightweight division. Rick Ogden in the blue gloves. And Bioma Carmo in the red tape gloves. Carmo doing a good job of keeping those hands held high, covering up. Seems as though Ogden's maybe trying to lure Carmo in a bit. Carmo with a little bit of the uh, height advantage. Stuff set takedown attempt, and now in a little bit of trouble is Ogden. Carmo showing some really good hip strength there. Great balance as he ends up in side control. And now the knee to the belly. Yeah, Ogden, when he went in for that takedown, I mean, it was, it was, a, it was pretty sloppy. It seemed like he was doing a desperation takedown, which, you know, it's the beginning of the round. He should have a nice, clean takedown, would have got a better position. 
Ended up giving up his back. Oh, I'm sorry. Getting on his back. Working for the old school. Kimura, and oh. he gets it. Oh, a big smile on Carmo's face and a bit of brick dancing. There we go. Let's take a look at the replay. I know. He put that in nice right there. I actually got him off the mat to do that. Look at that. Great job done by Carmo. Ladies and gentlemen, the official time, one minute even of round number one. You win a by tap out from an Americana Boyma. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Winnebago's Casino Resort, Sloan, Iowa, King of the Cage and General Tire present this three-round bout in the welterweight division. Your referee in charge of the action, Bruce Allen. Introducing first, in the Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing six feet tall, official weight 169.5. Four pounds. He represents Alpha Performance. Ladies and gentlemen from Cannon Falls, Minnesota, presenting Cody Gornes. Here's opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire. Red corner stands at five feet ten inches tall. Official weight, 167 pounds. He represents the Freestyle Gym. Ladies and gentlemen, from Winnebago, Nebraska, presenting Jesse James Reed. Here we go, round one. Cody Garnis in the blue tape gloves and Jesse Free in the red gloves. Inside leg kick for free. <laughs> that sounded funny. <laughs> for free. He's yeah. just giving away yeah. for free right He's there. No charge. I know. Quit insulting me, Inman. Right now, free. Trying to work from the half guard. It's going to cost him. <laughs> Here we go with the funds again. Such a hard thing to escape when you're a commentator, but man, here we go. Garnis is still trying to pass the guard. Free doing a good job of holding him at bay, but Garnis is trying to parse her up and deliver some nasty elbows in the process of it. Yeah, these guys right now are fresh and not sweaty, so you know holding him there is a lot easier than you know when you're in the third round, all sweated up and slippery. Garnis possesses good ground skills. He's also got great submission victories under his belt as well. And uh, Free just really hasn't had an opportunity to get anything started, but he's doing a good job of deflecting most of the damage. I don't know, man. He, he got pretty. Oh, yeah, yeah, open. yeah. As I say that, there's <laughs> blood coming out of his head. Okay. <laughs> Not good. Yeah, right here, working from side control, Garnis gets it. Garnis, you know, he, he is dropping some nice ground and pound action here, you know, and. and Connecting beautifully. Now, sometimes for a fighter, what does that do mentally sometimes? I know it depends from fighter to fighter, but when you start seeing blood, does that start giving you the timer, like, I better start something because this could get worse? Well, like the cut. I don't, you know what? I don't know. When I, when I see blood on myself, I, I get mad because I'm like, hey, I, he just made me bleed. That makes me look bad. I got to <laughs> do something. Yeah. You know? But, you know, it, work, it, work, it does work for, for the person you know, making you bleed, you know, because they're like, oh, hey, I'm making him bleed. I'm going to make him pay. And, and now it's, making, it's working for Garnis as he was able to slip that arm underneath and get that rear naked choke. Oh, yeah. Sometimes yeah. blood can be an advantage. <laughs> uh, lube action there. Yeah, because <laughs> earlier in the round, there, like you said, there's just, there's no sweat. There's no buildup. There's no way of locating and locking those in. But right here, Garnis just gets to work with those nice elbows. Tony, walk us through this. Oh, yeah, no, he, like I said, right here, that blood, everything made it easy to slip that right in, right in a choke in, and it was tight right from the get-go. And just squeeze his face turning red already, and look at that, look at that right there. He just... That's yeah. the worst thing when you see him squeezing and more blood's coming out. It's yeah. just such a violent look. But a great job by Garnis. Gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, the official time, two minutes and four seconds of round number one. 
You win it by tap out from a rear naked choke, Cody Garnett. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Winter Vegas Casino Resort, Sloan, Iowa, King of the Cage and General Tire present this three round bout in the Bantamweight Division. Your referee in charge of the action, Bruce Allen. Introducing first in the Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing. Five feet eight inches tall, official weight 137.4 pounds. He represents Mick Doyle MMA. Ladies and gentlemen from Omaha, Nebraska, presenting Emika Ifakondo. Here's opponent across the cage, butting out of our general tire, red corner stands at five feet seven inches tall, official weight. 140.2 pounds. He represents one combat sports. Ladies and gentlemen from Sioux City, Iowa, presenting Jorge the Super Saiyan Serrano. And here we go, round one. Jorge Serrano. A veteran here, I could definitely say that here at King of the Cage, as he gets set, uh, set to take on Imeka Ikokandu. Ikokandu in the blue gloves, Serrano in the red gloves. Serrano is what I would call a soldier in the cage, man. He just keeps attacking, attacking, and every shot, he just, he just keeps you thinking. He will not let you rest, and that's the way it should be. You know, keep your opponent guessing, and that's one of the skills that Serrano brings. He will make you guess all night long. Yeah, I mean, if, if, you, if you're doing that, I mean, you're, you're, you're making it easy for yourself as your opponent's trying to figure you out, you know? And if he can't figure you out quick enough, you're gonna light him up and put him away. More combinations displayed by Serrano. And Serrano's the type of guy, like, you know, if you have homies and you go out and you get stuck in an alley in a bad situation, he's the guy that you want in your corner. I mean, honestly, this guy, he seriously has delivered some of the most serious beatings I've seen in mixed martial arts in this area, in the state of Iowa. One of the top fighters, I'd have to say. If a, if a condor right there with a good takedown defense, now there's Serrano take him down. Serrano taking the outer part of the cage. Always known for putting a collection of combinations together. I'd have to say uh, Serrano could probably get away with the nickname the Riddler. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I got a little riddle for you. See if you can get out of this. If a conduit's just still trying to put this together, he's still trying to put that game plan, but. Serrano's just not giving him a chance to think. One thing I don't like, though, with Ifakondo is every time Serrano comes in with the punches, he drops his hands, and then he just does his head movement, which is good head movement, but eventually, you know, you're going to get caught because you ain't got your hands up to protect it. That's right. Ifakondo really trying to put something together here. He landed one nice shot on Serrano, but Serrano, for every shot that he lands, Serrano lands like six or seven more. Oh, and takes a big one to the jaw as I say that. Nice hook by Serrano. Oh! Ifakondo oh. catches him right on the chin. Serrano goes into that autopilot wrestling mode, you know, where you take exactly, a shot and you're like, yeah. I'm going in for the takedown. But a nice sprawl by Ifakondo. I think Ifakondo might have figured him out. Yeah, you know, he put the riddle together here. <laughs> Serrano with a little bit of blood coming out. And quickly how things change 
in the world of mixed martial arts because, man, Serrano was controlling this. Now if a Kondu is starting to take the power away. Uh, yeah, when you cut when you cut an opponent, I mean, you get confidence there too. You're like, hey, I made him bleed, I'm cutting him, I'm hurting him. I'm, what I'm doing is working. And those little things, I mean, people wouldn't even put those things together and think about that, but it's true, man. If I saw that I cut somebody off, I'm like, okay, I'm onto something here, it's working. My technique is, is working. Oh, Superman punch gets stopped in his tracks. But you could see how Serrano went from that 110% energy oh, and yeah. dropped to about 80% within seconds. Well, you got to think, too. I mean, when you get hit, you get dazed. You know, I mean, he's still, he still, he should have been recovered by now, but I mean, it probably, you know, affects him right there where. And he, he gets clipped a little bit like that. So it, it keeps him right there where, you know, he's like, hey, man, I got to be careful, watch my hits, movements, all this stuff. Yeah, the timing gets thrown off. And it seems as though he had the timing down, but now he's bringing it right back to him. Final seconds remain here in the first round. Man, what a war between these two fighters. And I think Serrano just needed a couple more seconds here and a little bit of break from what was going on, man, because he got caught a couple times there. Yeah, no, I mean, you see it right here. Serrano, you know, tagging him up and then going right there. He comes back, you know, and lights him up nice, and from there he just starts taking control, you know. Every little shot, I mean, he was throwing a lot, but the ones he was throwing were landed, making him count. Yeah, if Ikandu with that nice knockdown, I mean, that could have probably overshadowed all the efforts that Serrano put in, in round one. There's nothing worse than, you know, putting in that work for a solid three minutes, and then the final two minutes, your opponent just robs you of that round. You're like, oh, wait yeah. a second, what happened? And if Akandu could be on a roll here, look at this. He's really catching him off guard. And this says a lot about if Akandu because Serrano has got some, he's got artillery in those hands. Yeah. yeah, I see Serrano now hesitating a little, you know, like thinking, what's if Akandu gonna throw at me right now? That is true. I, I you know, the, the intensity has kind of been taken down a notch, but it's more of being cautious and rightfully so. I think it's like he kind of awoke the beast within a Fakandu. Because <laughs> in the first round, he was just like feeling it out. Now all of a sudden, it's like, who is this guy? Yeah, well, Serrano is landing, landing some nice shots right now. But I don't know if if, if, uh, if Kondo, you know, he's like, hey, you know what? That's fine, land those, but I'm going to land a bomb on you. You can see that he's starting to turn things up here, if a Kondo. Round one was sort of like just the feel out process, and now he's starting to really bring it up a notch. Yeah, that first round, Serrano was backing up the condo up a lot, you know, making a move. And right now, Serrano's doing a little more of the backing up and just watching where he's at, trying not to get tagged. Oh, Ooh. man. Serrano taking shots as he comes in. I think Serrano has been able to preserve just a little bit of energy, and now it's starting to come back out again. And kind of trying to lock in his sights on Serrano there just to make that punch count.
putting a collection of combinations together. If the Kondu just continues to try and pick Serrano apart, and he's taking his time, just waits for that opportunity. It's more of a counter puncher, I'd have yeah, to say. Yeah, no, he, he, he's waiting. And, and it, the only thing I see Serrano doing wrong is when he explodes on him, he explodes, but a lot of those hits don't land, so he wastes a lot of energy. Or if a Kondu just stands there, relaxed, and just making his shots count. Yeah, if a Kondu, man, he, it looks like he's not breathing hard. He's still got a lot of energy left. And Serrano's looking the exhausted of the two here. But still bringing it, no doubt about it. Like you said, as soon as Serrano explodes, you know, Emika Ipakandu is just right there to capitalize on that. Yeah, I mean, there, there's no quitting Serrano. You, you can see that right there. He's still trying to press forward and, you know, land the shots, but they're kind of doing a good job right there of avoiding a lot of the damage and just returning some damage. Yeah, and, and he waits. He's so patient. I think that's the uh, the awesome part of it. He's so patient, he just waits, and then he just makes it a spectacular counter strike. Yeah, he's using that jab really nice. Really nice, slowing Serrano down a lot with that when he comes in. It's like he times it out so perfect as if Serrano's just walking right into it. Oh, exactly, yeah, <laughs> just that. <laughs> oh, more shots right now. If a Condu's just starting to turn things up. But Serrano, no, make no doubt about it, man. He is really bringing it on to him, throwing it all on the line, not oh, really he, holding he, back. He's not making it easy. No, not, not at, all. at all. Man. If a Kondu brings that scary back to the cage. And welcome back to King of the Cage for another night of mixed martial arts action here at Winnebago's Casino Resort. Sloan, Iowa, if a Kondu, really taking it to Serrano. The counter striking is really working for him. He's really patient, and it's been working for him. Oh, yeah, I mean, he, he is, he's, he's still looking fresh. I mean, he's moving around as Serrano comes in with those power shots and then just connects with his jab and his cross. I mean, it's, it's nice. It seems like the one that's really putting in a lot of work is Serrano is utilizing all the energy, and if Akandu's just taking advantage, he's like, just keep coming at me. And that's, you know, and that doesn't work for every fighter, man, to be a counter striker. It takes talent to do that, and if Akandu has that. Yeah, no, he, he's using it fully to his advantage right here. You know, Serrano's coming in, and, you know, he's trying to connect hard, and, you know, I, he's wasting a lot of energy because he's not connecting enough. And that's where Serrano, I mean, uh, if, if Akandu says, okay, you know what? Are you tired? Now I can pick you apart. Oh, nice, nice stiff jab there by Ifakandu. Kind of trying to put a little more pressure on Serrano here. Chasing him down. More shots by Ipakandu. Serrano's still bringing it, though. Now he's, he's not letting up. He's still firing his shots exactly where he was in round one and two. It seems as though uh, Serrano got refreshed there in between the rounds. He's starting to look a little fresher than he did in round two. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. He, I think he was a little dazed in round two throughout that whole round, and right now he, he recovered nicely. The yeah. stiff jabs have got to be so frustrating for Serrano as he comes in. Epikandu just utilizing that to his advantage. Kind of doing a good job of, you know, with that stiff jab and cutting the corner and then coming in with that cross.
And more displayed by Jorge Serrano. Efikandu just uh, now starting to starting to breathe a bit, but it's this is the only round I've seen him actually take a breath. Seems as though he hasn't taken any breath at all. Oh, yeah. Well, he, he's moving a lot more right here. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's trying to, like I said, get, get Serrano to open up so he can just deliver those shots. The head movement, too, man. Just Ifakandi just able to get out of harm's way. Look how he just twists that body to the right and able to counter with a, a right on the other side there. It's like a corner punch. You turn the corner, you become a <laughs> corner, and you, like, punch the guy as he comes around the corner. Yeah. Incredible. No time, they're gonna just keep going. Right now, Ipecano's doing a good job to keep the pressure on Serrano. He's got to move against his cage, and you know, he's landing some good shots. Every time Serrano tries to move, he ends up back on the cage. Oh! And Ipecano now starting to bring it. Instead of waiting, he's actually starting to bring the situation to Serrano and continue to keep that pressure. What a brawl between these two, man. There's, the fans are really winning here tonight. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, if you a know, condu just like slapped him and ran, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Actually, it was a hammer fist to the face, but you know, it's an entertaining fight. But yeah, like I was saying, man, these guys are just really bringing it, and the fans are winning. But man, let it be known, Serrano will not go away. <laughs> I know, you gotta put him away to stop him. You right? gotta bring him back to the cage or exactly. something, man. Because I mean, he, he's getting tagged here, left and right. And I mean, there's no quit. He's firing back with full intent. Like even a bat. I think it would break over his head. Like the bat wouldn't even do anything. Serrano's just that tough. But if a Kondu man is just bringing it at him and been calm throughout this entire ordeal between these two. Oh man. 20 seconds left, the pressure is on. This is probably a tricky fight for Serrano. I don't think Serrano's fought somebody like this where it kind of waits in the cut and, and waits for you to capitalize yeah. on your mistake. Yeah, no, and like I said, he uh, kind of got some good good strikes, and then he gets out of the way really quickly. Yeah, a counter striker is, is sort of like a guy that holds up a mirror. Okay, um, I'm going to show you what your flaws are, and every time you punch, I'm just going to punch you in the face and let you know that was a mistake. Yeah, a good exchange going back and forth by both these guys. You know, just kind of getting a bit more accurate on his punching than opposed to Serrano. And right here, this is some more of those shots going underneath. Just strategically landing those shots. It's like almost every shot he threw landed. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah, they were. That. I mean, he set every it up attempt. with that jab, and boom, here comes the hook or the cross. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action here in the great state of Iowa, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Eric Carr scores this bout 30 to 27, while judges Chad Lunders and Ben Wilson both have it 29 to 28. All three in favor of your winner by unanimous decision, Emika Ifakandu. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Winnebago Casino Resort, Sloan, Iowa, King of the Cage and General Tire present our co-featured bout of the evening. Sanctioned by the Iowa State Athletic Commission, Director Joe Walsh, Deputies Ted Lewis, Rob Lubeda, Lloyd Moore, Tyrone Roberts, and John Walsh Sr. It's in conjunction with King of the Cage Incorporated, President and Founder Terry Trevilcock Jr. Matchmaker Tom Vaughn, promoter Jeff Mahalik. The three judges scoring this bout will be Chad Lunders, Eric Carr, and Ben Wilson. After the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Mike 
Beltran. All right, fight fans, here we go. Put your hands together. This is our co-feature of the evening. Three rounds of MMA in the light heavyweight division. Introducing first, in the Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing six feet four inches tall. Official weight, 204.2 pounds. This Master Bridges Academy fighter is making his professional debut after a 10 and five amateur campaign. Ladies and gentlemen, from Omaha, Nebraska, presenting Eric Murray Jr. Here's opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire. Red corner stands at 6'1", official weight, 203.8 pounds. This 6'9", one-on-one MMA fighter has a perfect professional record. Two bouts, two victories, no defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, from North Platte, Nebraska, presenting Braden Lunchbox A. Once again, your referee in charge of our co-feature, Mike Beltran, three rounds scheduled. All right, gentlemen, been over the rules already. Protect yourself at all times, obey my commands at all times. Touch goes now if you want. At the sound of the bell, come on out and handle your business. Let's go. Here we go, Mike Beltran, our rep for this matchup in the light heavyweight division, a division that Tony Kryptonite Lopez is very familiar with. In fact, several titles to your name, the light heavyweight division, heavyweight division, almost middleweight division. You almost went there, bro. <laughs> yeah, I was robbed, dude. <laughs> Here we go, Braden Erdman in the red gloves and Eric Murray in the blue tape gloves. Look at Eric Murray with that reach advantage, but doesn't phase Erdman as he comes in. Erdman, a very technical fighter. Murray with a nice kick. Oh, man. Speaking of technical fighters, here we go with a nice kick to start things off. This looks like the beginning of the end to me. It could be. I mean. Oh, man. He is just, Murray's not letting up, man. He's like, nope, this I'm is my place. everything you can do to get out. <laughs> Erdman is in a panic state here. Murray's just not gonna let it go. And some nasty elbows. Erdman, I think that could be it. You know, some fighters, it may work when you're holding on, but this isn't gonna work in Murray's world, man. This guy is just ending oh, this fight man. now. And that is it. That was, that was good control on top right there. It all started with that nice, beautiful kick he landed on his dome right here. So picture perfect, it was like like a short kick, but it worked, bam! Oh! Up with that cross. That was like, a, uh, what, two punches to follow up with that? <laughs> Man! Well, yeah, you see right here, you know, even though when he was landing the strikes, he still kept composure of, of control yeah. position, so that way, you know, he'd keep that position and be able to do all the damage he did. Ladies and gentlemen, referee in charge, Mike Beltran has seen enough, steps in, calls a halt to this bout, Due to strikes. The official time, one minute and five seconds of round number one. Your winner by TKO, Eric Murray Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Winnebago's Casino Resort, Sloan, Iowa, King of the Cage, and General Tire present this three round bout in the Handsome weight division. Your referee in charge of the action, Bruce Allen. <laughs> Introducing first, in the Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing five feet eight inches tall, official weight, 141.4 pounds. He represents Carlson Gracie MMA. Ladies and gentlemen, from the west side of Chicago, Illinois,
Here's a point across the cage. Here we go, round one. A matchup between John Hobson and Ricky Ortiz. It's a catch weight of 150 pounds. Someone prematurely ringing that bell, so don't get confused there. They're ready to watch fights. Yeah, they are. They're like, let's just get with it. Ortiz walking in with those hands low, possibly trying to lure in Hobson. Ooh, I think Hobson hurt himself right here. Hobbs scrambling around here. Look at the quickness of this guy's head movement. Ortiz says, I don't like the way you punch me, man. Now I'm mad. <laughs> Takes it to the ground. Looks from the half guard. You know, I think it's not an automatic reflex. When you go down, you grab the, your opponent's head. Yeah. Because I know I do that when I go down. I just grab the head like, hey, I got to hold something. Ortiz looking to cross over here. Hobson showing some uh, good offense thus far. Hobson regains full guard right here. More punches. Ortiz posturing up. Hobson holding on for dear life. No, but you know what I liked what I saw right there is that Hobson, when Ortiz started trying to do some ground and pound, Hobson fired right back and changed it all up. Yeah. Now he's in this position of holding it his own here. That's what, that's what you got to remember, too, when you're on the bottom. When you're on the top guy punches, hey, you can punch it, too. You know, just sit there and, you know, block and take it. Hobbs almost gets the, the escape, but Ortiz going to get you out of control and keep the press in his cave right here. Nice shot being dropped. Ortiz switches things around here. 54 seconds to keep going strong here. He keeps dropping those bombs. I'm pretty sure it's going to end right here. Ortiz in a little bit of uh, situation trying to get out of this, but uh, it's a great job done by Hobbs of sustaining the situation. Really making it uncomfortable for Hobbs, though, with uh, somebody's forearm on your neck. Yeah. He finally gets his head out. 14 seconds remains. More knees. Trying to finish strong here. I think this may Whoa. allow him to finish that round strong. Hobbs almost landed a nice little hook there. Take a look at the replay here. Yeah, this is where, right there, away Tortiz just takes him down after that little flurry. Hobbs flew on him, drops a nice round of pound. You know, holding good position here. Hobbs doing a good job too of you know not letting Ortiz do too much damage to him while he's on the bottom. Here, when when Hobbs or Ortiz had a good chance of finishing it, Hobbs just ended up grabbing him and holding him down. So, like I said. Stop the, all the damage. And here we go, round two. Oh, getting a little crafty here. Right now, Ortiz crosses right over and getting into the full mounted position, looking to drop some bombs here. 
I don't know if that was too smart. No, it was smart for my Hobbs and let Ortiz just get a full mount, but yeah. you can see his, uh, Hobbs' legs coming over pretty good. Yeah, Hobbs really trying to utilize those hips, but it's not working. And now Ortiz is trying to finish things off here. There's nothing more humbling than being in this situation and having to cover up and not be able to go. I think this could be the beginning of the end. That's yeah. it. Yeah, when you see the ref getting that close, you know he's talking to the fighter. Hey, protect yourself. Yeah. Do something, you know. If he gets any closer, it looks like he could use a microscope. Because <laughs> honestly, man, that was just, man, Hobbs was stuck. Yeah, he got him good. Good position here, not letting him go nowhere. Hobbs Which, did fight the good fight, man, but towards the end, just, just got caught up. Yeah. We'll throw it to Dean Stone. Ladies and gentlemen, Referee in charge, Bruce Allen, has seen enough, steps in, calls a halt to this bout due to strikes. The official time, 42 seconds of round number two, the winner by TKO, Ricky Ortiz. He's been untouched his last four or five fights that I've seen. Um, other than that, he comes off as a humble guy, which makes it harder for me to do what I need to do. But I think I had him a little rattled today, a little rattled, rattled it, at weigh-in. Yeah, you know, he asked for this fight. They said that he's been asking for it. Uh, when I seen him, he didn't look like he wanted it. Uh, you know, I think that the, as a fan, um, you, you know, you can get a couple beers in you and, and you can and you can beat the world. But when you're in there and, and the pressure gets put on, uh, it's a whole nother story. I guess it's gone through my head a few times, you know, how, how I'm going to... I'm gonna win this fight. Like I said, the guy's a tough fighter. He's the toughest round. I don't know much about my opponent. I know he hasn't fought in quite a while. Um, I stay active and I've been in the gym, so I'm ready for whoever whoever's in there. I'm 30 years old. What else do I have? I have two daughters. I have a full-time job. I have no other way of competing. You know, at the top level, this is it. I trained hard for this camp. Um, I train the same for uh, every fight, no matter who I'm fighting. Uh, I train for the finish and uh, I train for the distance too, so uh, I'm ready for it. He's the best local. He's the best local fighter. He's the best. He's been untouched his last five fights. I'm just going to look to finish him uh, any way that comes, you know, ground, stand up, kicks, elbows, anything, you know, I, I'm just looking for the finish. Humble guy, but everybody thinks of Kyle Angerman like he's a god. Let me prove to everybody he's not. Heath, I don't know what you expected or what you think you're going to get out of this, but it's not going to be good for you. Here is Heath Merman. And here we go. Heath getting an opportunity at the uh, amateur champion in the middleweight division, now in his pro career starting from square one, but Heath Mammon set to take on Kyle Langerman. You heard the exchange of words, a heat of exchange, uh, talking about, uh, you know, saying that everybody thinks Kyle Langerman's a god out here. I I would doubt that, but I, I think that they really have some high standards of uh, Kyle Langerman. So tonight, this is a very tough fight for Heath Mammon trying to take out um, a serious beast. Kyle Angerman, man, his wrestling abilities are absolutely incredible. He's an explosive individual when he gets in the cage. His hands and everything have just gotten better over time. But uh, this is a really huge challenge. This fight is, goes back about a year. Uh, Heath has been just begging for this fight for quite some time. And you heard Kyle Angerman say, I care for what you wish for. So we'll see. Uh, you know what's going to happen tonight. This is also a huge risk for Kyle Angerman too, as well. Um, as he doesn't really go to a school, he kind of trains uh, independently. So this is, says a lot about Mammon. If he does get this win tonight, it'll catapult him very far in this organization. And looks like everything's ready to rock as Dean Stone gets Kyle Angerman out here to the cage. Here is Kyle Angerman. And you can hear the crowd out there. Kyle Angerman making his way to the cage, a tough middleweight, has had a very impressive amateur career. He has held the middleweight 
Amateur Championship as well. And tonight, getting the opportunity to put another fight under his pro belt. Kyle Angerman, a uh, huge star out here in the state of Iowa, has a huge following. And tonight, getting that opportunity to showcase his skills once again here at Winnebago's Casino Resort. Brought to you in part by General Tire. Anywhere is possible. And of course, Lucas Oil, made in America, sold to the world. Remember, you can find us on social media everywhere. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Stay up to date on your favorite fighters and more. Also, find chances of winning tickets, free trips, and all that. Follow us on social media today or log on to kingofthecage.com for more details. So Angerman had a, a bit of exchange of words with Heath as well, letting Heath know that, man, tonight, you know, he didn't know what he was trying to get at with, you know, offering a fight with Angerman. And Angerman said, okay, let me show you something tonight. And Heath is just ready for that opportunity. So I'm excited because if Heath wins this fight, it will say a lot about Heath, but Angerman knows that this is a risk because when you can't really find footage on a fighter because they don't train out of a, a, you know, a gym and it's just an unorthodox style, that also poses a risk. So tonight not getting the ability to train and know what your fighter brings to the cage or what school he comes from, you don't even know what style he's bringing to it. So we'll see how this all pans out as we throw it to the veteran voice of the cage, Dean Stone, to get this matchup underway. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Winnebago's Casino Resort, Sloan, Iowa, King of the Cage and General Tire present a co-feature belt of the evening. Sanctioned by the Iowa State Athletic Commission, Director Joe Walsh, Deputies Ted Lewis, Rob Lobeda, Lloyd Moore, Tyrone Roberts, and John Walsh Sr. It's in conjunction with King of the Cage Incorporated. President and founder, Jerry Trevilcock Jr. Matchmaker Tom Vaughn, promoter Jeff Mahalik. The three judges scoring this bout will be Eric Carr, Chad Lunders, and Ben Wilson. After the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action from East LA, Mike Beltra. And now, for all the fight fans in attendance and the millions joining us around the world. Iowa, let's hear it. This is our main event of the evening. Three rounds of MMA at a catch weight of 175 pounds. Introducing first. In the Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing five feet nine inches tall, Official weight, 174.6 pounds. This independent fighter is making his highly anticipated professional debut this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, from Correctionville, Iowa, presenting Heath Merman. His opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire red corner stands at 6-1. Official weight, 173.4 pounds. This Des Moines Mixed Martial Arts Academy fighter is perfect in his professional campaign. Two bouts, two victories, no defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the pride of Sioux City, Iowa, the undefeated Kyle. Once again, your referee in charge of our main event, Mike Beltran, with the final instructions, three rounds of action schedule. All right, John, been over the rules already. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Tusk goes now if you want. At the sound of the bell, come on out and handle your business. Let's go. Well, you heard the exchange of words in the interview. Heath has wanted an opportunity at Angerman for quite some time. Like you said, I, I, I guess he said that some people think of him as a god. I would have to disagree with that. I would just say that he's <laughs> probably the hero out here. 
Um, but um, Heath has wanted this opportunity, and sometimes you got to say, be careful what you wish for. You know what I mean? You just never know. And here we go. Angerman. Oh, with a big slam. Oh, I think that? he's out. Oh, my gosh. I know, he thought Byron was putting his hand like he's number one. I could, yeah, I can't even imagine, man. If this was on asphalt, think of the damage that could have done. But this is like a little bit of padding. This is in a mattress. Look what it can do to you. That mat, that mat can knock you out with one takedown. Yeah, no, I mean, that was, that was a nice slam, though. I mean, it wasn't just a takedown. It was a body slam. Yeah, that was it. Ooh. The impact. Ladies and gentlemen, the official time, 16 seconds, round one. Your winner by knockout, still undefeated, the pride of Sioux City, Kyle Angerman. Ladies and gentlemen, from the sensational Santa Ana Star Center, Rio Rancho, New Mexico, King of the Cage and General Tire present our featured bout of the evening. Sanctioned by the New Mexico State Athletic Commission, Chairman Gavin Pantoja, Executive Director Richard Espinosa, Deputy Director Kathy Ortiz, Commissioners Rob DeBuck, Diego Escabel and Elias Quintana. It's in conjunction with King of the Cage Incorporated. President and founder, Terry Trebilcock Jr. Matchmaker, John Judy. Promoter, Tom Vaughn. The timekeeper at the bell, Alexis Gonzalez. Ladies and gentlemen, the three judges scoring this bout will be Kenny Ortiz, Mark Sanchez, and Chris Teyes. After the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Joe Coca. And now, for the thousands in attendance and the millions joining us around the world. New Mexico, let's hear it. This is our main event of the evening. Three rounds of MMA in the Bantamweight Division. Introducing first, in the Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing 5 feet 11 inches tall. Official weight, 144.6 pounds. This Zia Fight Club and Master Kubaka Submission Academy fighter is making his professional debut after an impressive 10 and 1 amateur campaign. Ladies and gentlemen, from Aztec, New Mexico, presenting Isaias Bones Gordo. His opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire, red corner stands at six feet tall. Official weight, 144.8 pounds. The Santa Fe fitness and martial arts fighter has a professional record of one victory with no defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, from Santa Fe, New Mexico, presenting Chess the Vanilla Gorilla, Martinez. Once again, your referee of our main event, Joe Coca, three rounds scheduled. Fighters, you've been given your instructions in the dressing room. Remember to protect yourselves at all times and obey my commands at all times. I expect a clean, fair fight. Any questions from you, Blue? Any questions from you, Red? Touch gloves if you wish. Go back to your corners and wait for the bell. And here we go. Isaias Gordo and Jess Martinez. All roads have led to this. Both fighters have destroyed all their opponents. But I can tell you, somebody's got to lose tonight. Isaias Gordo, in his last several outings, outstriking his opponents, but look at this, Jess Martinez really bringing it. 
And I've never seen Isaias Gordo just corner, being a corner like that, take shots that quick. Isaias is normally the guy doing that. Yeah, Martinez, he, he's not waiting for nothing. No, absolutely like, you not. Know what? Let's put this away. Nice knees to the stomach right there, to the body. Look at that. There you go. I was about to say, Gordon better get off that cage. More kicks to the body. It's actually incredible because I've seen both of these fighters. I've seen their entire career throughout their amateur uh, career. And I just never thought that these two were going to meet in the cage so quick. It was like a, a story that could have probably went on for uh, a while, the hype. But man, these guys are already here. This is the perfect main event. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're putting on a good show right here. Strikes going back and forth. Good shots. Martinez is just a beast in the cage. And like I said, Isaias Gordo is usually the guy that's doing this. And I've never, can't even remember the last time I've seen it, Isaias Gordo worked up against the cage like this. Because, man, he is just striking his opponents, outclassing and outstriking his opponents. But I think it's just a matter of time where Isaias just kind of gets right back into it and then starts changing things. Yeah, I mean, if Martinez, yeah, he had him up against the cage, pressed good, landed some good elbows, good strikes, and then he lets him out. You know, that, that's, you don't want to do that. Keep going with what works. Exactly. The last thing you want to do is let Isaias Gordo loose here in the cage because, man, he will start putting a collection of combinations together and you'll end up on the mat. But uh, Jesse Martinez is just a different type of fighter that Isaias hasn't faced before, as well as Jesse Martinez. It's funny because these guys are usually taller than their other opponents, and it's like, okay, getting a taste of your own medicine for both yeah, of yeah, these guys. Nice and equal in size, reach, everything was even down. So, I mean, it's, it's ooh, nice backhand right there. Or back push, I'm sorry. Sias Gordo trying to keep him at bay. Jess Martinez just continues to stay loose here. Very accurate with his, his kicks and his striking tonight. Uh, Lord seems a little hesitant with his hands. You know, he's throwing that, that little Savat kick pretty nice, but his hands, he just ain't letting it fly. Yeah, you know, and that's, it's surprising to me. Isaias Gordo is always throwing the hands, but Jess Martinez may have caught him off guard a bit, where he's just thinking twice about striking. This is probably going to be a bout between these two is who's gonna take more risk? Who's really gonna put it all on the line? Because both of these guys are equally matched up in, when it comes to the fight card. But so far, it looks like Jess Martinez may win this round. Yeah, he, he's delivered a few more accurate punches, a little more damage, especially when he gets him up against the cage. You know, where uh, Gordo just sitting there trying to defend, not really doing much. Yeah, and I think if Asias just did like 40 seconds of just constant combinations and really turned things up, it could change the round. Yeah, I mean, especially like I said, right there, where he backs up Martinez up against the cage, I mean, he's got a perfect opportunity. And I see when he gets a clinch on Martinez, and it's like he just throws one knee and then lets him go. Throw a little flurry there, and I mean. It's something you might just regret later down the road, yeah. man. And right now, Jess Martinez is going to finish this round strong, and this is definitely going to leave uh, an impression in the minds of the judges. Coca on top of the action. Nice elbows right there to finish off that round by Martinez. Great job. More MMA action when we return. Stick around.
And right here, Jess Martinez really taking it to Isaias Gordo. Probably the winner of that round based on those shots alone. And then it just, towards the end of the round, it started to die down a bit. There wasn't as much exchange between the two. Just feeling out process was kind of opposite. Yeah, I, I was just gonna <laughs> say, they did it backwards on that one. <laughs> so we will see a second round between these two. This has been a matchup probably about two, three years in the making between these two. Both have fought on the same cards in the amateur division, but never quite fought each other. And now here we are as pros, and we're ready in the second round. Jess Martinez put a nice collection of uh, combinations together, and we'll see if he'll try and repeat that here. When I look at these two, I, I really think that these guys are the future of MMA, man. And this is just a really tough crossroad for both of them. And I think both of them will grow from this fight. But, uh, you know, winning this fight, there's a lot of pressure going in for these two. Well, you always want to see, I mean, when you got two good fighters coming up, sometimes you don't want to meet earlier on in their career because of that. You want a, a great buildup for that great fight. Yeah. You know, maybe Absolutely. a championship belt title on the liner. But... You know, when it's early in the career, same thing, you know, it's still going to be a great fight. And just even better, you know, in the cross. It's kind of like, you know, too soon can be like maybe not a good thing. But with these guys, you know, you wanted to see them get those fights under their bouts to put on even a more exciting fight. Because who knows, it could have been a stagnant fight if they fought earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But this I mean, is yeah, this could lead for, you know, win winner and loser for later a good rematch yeah absolutely and we've seen that plenty of times where a fighter will lose to a, an opponent and that opponent ends up becoming the champion and, and everybody's like man you got this gremlin on your back and you need to literally defend that if you really want to be the champion i'm sure you felt that pressure before where you're like no nah, man but everybody wants you when you uh, have the title man everybody's after that belt and sometimes confidence takes over if these certain individuals are yeah they it does. fight off more than they could chew as we saw uh, earlier tonight with Kyle Ingerman. Martinez oh, trying to put in a choke here, softening him up. Jess Martinez sinking in that rear naked choke here. And that's obviously out now and trying to roll him over. He's got a nice body triangle in there, just a full position as he's delivering bombs to his face. Gordon's doing a good job of defending that rear naked, I'll say that much. He might, he might have it right here. Trying he's to work that magic. Everything. He's trying to end it, but... Huh? Martinez gives it up. Didn't want to waste his arm strength, you know, blow his arms out right there just yet. Two minutes, 12 seconds remains. Martinez continuing to work from his back. Sias Gordo just in a position of trying to get out of this. Oh, God, that's... Gordo doing a good job of scrambling, you know, moving constantly so that way he doesn't let uh, Martinez just set up perfectly where he wants to be for that rear naked. Constantly setting that in, and here we go. More elbows being dropped. You know, that's a good thing right there Martinez is doing right now. You know, he's not just focusing on one thing. I mean, he's, he's finding shots here, softening them up, switching them around. And, you know, every now and then he puts in the choke, and then when that ain't working, back to hitting him, striking. Yeah, and like I said, man, I can't remember the last time I've seen Esaias Gordo, uh, you know, in a situation of get, taking all those shots. Like I said, he's usually that guy, and man, what a matchup between these two. Still scoring points. Whether they're damaging shots or not, he's still scoring points in the minds of the judges with 40 seconds left. You know this may go into the third round and definitely going to be useful here later in the fight. 
Isaias is trying to find a way out of this. Very frustrating for Isaias Gordo. Martina, they're using a little a suffocation method there to try to. That's a humbling thing, too. I mean, and, and it really can suffocate you. It kind of oh, works yeah. like suction I mean, cups, you know? When, you know? when you're breathing heavy, look at that. Open up the choke right there. Does he get it? Jess Martinez trying to finish it off, and I think Asias Gordo will have time in his corner. And that's it. Oh, that was close. That was close. Arena here in the state of New Mexico. We return. Jess Martinez in the red gloves and in the blue gloves. It's Asias Gordo. So far, I'd have to give the uh, uh, to uh, Jess Martinez. I mean, obviously controlling um, the entire last round on the ground there. Asias knows he needs to go for broke here. Yeah, Martinez doing a great job, you know, just relax. So do everything he's doing, just relax. Where I think, it's, like I said, Gordo's confused right now. Like, hey, man, what am I doing wrong? Yeah, because right now it's just Martinez has just been a couple steps ahead. And it's not like he's delivered any damage to Asias Gordo. It's just the puzzle of this entire thing. Just Martinez controlling things. High kick, barely misses. I think Martinez is trying to lure him in so he can take him back to the ground and, you know, implement his game and plan to get on the ground. Jess Martinez takes an inside leg kick. Man, his, kick, his kicks look so effortless. Every single time he throws a kick, but so effective and snappy. Like it barely it takes him any effort to throw a kick. It's just like, oh, yeah, no, perfect. He, he's throwing him a little too relaxed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and a nice takedown for Jess Martinez. That will be this first uh, solidification of him winning this round with that nice takedown. Yeah, I mean, the last time we saw, well, the last couple rounds we saw when, you know, Martinez on top, that's how the whole round goes. You know, he, does, he does a lot while he's down there, stays busy. I mean, the, the ref ain't going to stand him up. Only way he's going to stand him up is uh, if Martinez puts Gordo out. Coming down to the wire here, round three. Two minutes and 54 seconds remaining. If Jess just continues to stay on the ground, he may find himself walking out with the victory. And this has got to be frustrating for uh, Isaias Gordo. It's like he's stuck in the web of Jess, trying to get out of this. And the only way he's going to win this fight is if he knocks Jess out or, or something. But uh, staying down here will definitely not win him the fight. And that's easier said than done, trying to get out of it. Jess is just showing some uh, top control position. Yeah, I mean, Gordo, he's trying to, you know, not take no damage, but, I mean, no submission attempts, not much going on here for him to, to score any points. It's definitely going to end up working against him, and Jess Martinez on top of him like a magnet, man, won't let him get back up. And looking to take him right back down to the ground. So we will see... See, what Jess Martinez is going to do here, man. This, He's just this, like. This is what I'm talking about right here. You know, Martinez just sitting there holding him. Oh, he took him down this time. God dang it. But if I he holds on to him, he could have just sat there, right? No, no. If, if, if Gordo would have been striking him, that, that takedown would have been that easy. Yeah. You know, absolutely. it might have changed everything. His position would have changed his head position, everything. But when you sit there just trying to defend a takedown. You might as well try something. <laughs> you're giving your opponent all the opportunity to do his takedown he wants to do. Jess Martinez opening up, delivering some more elbows. And Asias just hanging in there, man. Jess Martinez just showing some superior ground control here. I mean, how frustrating is that gotta be? It's like it's like being in quicksand, man. You just not that I know what it feels like, but it's like trying to get out of this has got to be so exhausting, mentally exhausting. Yeah, I mean, when you, when you go from one position to another thing, okay, maybe I'm getting out here and all of a sudden, man, I get, I get worse. Yeah. It's like, 
Man, it does get frustrating because then you're like, man, what do I got to do to get out of here? And then the thought process too as well, man. Trying to get out of this, probably exhausting as well. Trying to formulate a plan, but man, 29 seconds and Jess Martinez might just find himself victorious here. Getting a little bit of booing from the crowd, but man, Martinez is playing it just right. Yeah, he did everything he had to do to right now, secure he's, a victory. Yeah, it's like he's got an iced tea in his hand right now. He's just chilling out like, eh. I'll wait till the waiter comes back, you know? <laughs> Asias just knows that this can't end very well. Yeah, Martinez, I mean, he did a good job there controlling him on the ground. Looks like Gordo, you know, he ain't done with the fight yet. <laughs> what was that all about? He I don't know. Was, was it an exchange of words? He might or? have been asking for a round four. <laughs> Hey, can you go four rounds? <laughs> it probably was. How bad do you want to work overtime? Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of bantamweight action here in the great state of New Mexico, we go to the judges' scorecards and all three judges at cage side. Kenny Ortiz, Mark Sanchez, and Chris Tejas score this bout exactly the same way. 30 to 27. All three in favor of your winner by unanimous decision. Still undefeated, the Vanilla Gorilla, Chess Martin.